Greetings, shippers, and welcome back to Headcanon Theater, where we take a look at ideas slash theories that may be large enough to be considered fanon or may be being kept alive by a few dedicated individuals. Either way, these ideas make fandom a little more interesting for everyone. Last time, we visited a world where Peter Parker is the son of Captain America Steve Rogers and Iron Man Tony Stark. Today, we look at a juggernaut of a film in terms of mass appeal and inescapability, and now that I have a daughter, my fate is most likely forever tied to this film as well. I'm talking about Frozen, and oh how I wish I could let it go. Now whether or not one liked, disliked, or was ambivalent about the film is not the focus of this episode. Instead, we're going to zoom in on a headcanon concerning the film's villain, Hans. Much has been made of Hans's face heel turn, and the lack of foreshadowing surrounding it. Not to mention the alternate ways the same message could have been conveyed without having him abruptly go full Jafar. As a result, much fiction has been dedicated to expanding his character or exploring nuances some felt were touched upon but not fully explored in the film. Hans has been paired quite liberally within the fandom with both Elsa and Anna, and it is in regards to Elsa that this particular headcanon developed, that being that Hans has fire powers, making him essentially Elsa's opposite, and laying the foundation for either some form of understanding between them or an even grander villain battle than what was given on screen. This theory circulated on Reddit, home of many a fantastic and out there theory. Seriously, it's a good time there. Sometimes, when it's not a scary time just like Tumblr. So why fire powers? Well, aside from fire traditionally being depicted as the opposite of ice, largely because well, it is, and it makes for a very good contrast visually as well as narratively, Hans is said to have red hair, a hair that in some people's estimation has been deemed fiery red. Seeing as how Elsa has platinum blonde hair, blonde as ice, some say, a physical manifestation of the nature of her powers, similar to how as the ice permeates Anna's heart, her hair begins to turn white as well. Since that is the case, could Hans's red hair be an indication of the nature of his alleged powers? Another clue for fans of this headcanon, or theory as it were, is the gloves. Gloves play a huge role in this film as a motif, a symbol of repression and secrets. They're what Elsa uses to keep herself separate from others, both literally and metaphorically. One of the symbols of her embracing her powers is her tossing her gloves to the wind. Who else in the film has gloves? Hans. Indeed, Hans is gloved for the vast majority of the film. One of the rare occasions he takes off one of his gloves is to extinguish a flame while he explains his betrayal to Anna. When she comments, you're no match for Elsa, he states, no. You are no match for Elsa. <laughs> replacing his glove. That coupled with his plan to vanquish her and return Summer has led some to believe he wields fire powers and has practiced the same kind of emotional distancing that was forced upon Elsa, although obviously with a much more twisted outcome. Some also feel since he tells Elsa not to be the monster they think you are, he has some experience with people thinking he was a monster himself. Now some of you may be sitting there thinking, come on, this is a bit of a reach. Well, maybe. However, it seems to largely stem from the lack of development given to Hans within the narrative itself. The sole evidence for his betrayal is that he has many brothers and is the last of them, meaning he is likely to never inherit anything of value, and he briefly glanced at the castle during his and Anna's duet. Aside from that, up till his sudden betrayal, he's shown to be a decent guy. He helps run the kingdom quite well, supports the people, and even stops Elsa from being killed. So for many, his sudden face heel turn was a bit hard to swallow, and attempts were made to beef up his character, or at least make it more interesting, as much has been made of the decline of the caliber of Disney villains of late. If there are perceived gaps within the narrative, people will often rush to fill them, while others may not see a gap at all and accept the given narrative on its own terms, and both approaches are absolutely fine. The exploration of characters with powers similar to Elsa's within the narrative is not unique to just Hans. Some attribute fire powers to Elsa's sister Anna. However, Hans as a fire-wielding, misunderstood, and misguided prince has definitely gained traction in fandom even finding its way into fix, not only about the film, but from that awkwardly handled Once Upon a Time tie-in that also happened. For those interested in this, there are a few fix exploring it, and I mean a few. It's a small amount, and there is some very decent art, but it's hardly a juggernaut in the headcanon world. Rather, a small, well-heated corner, lighting the dungeon that houses all the Frozen headcanons and theories as they continue to multiply. With Frozen 2 getting a 2019 release date at the time of this recording, it's only a matter of time before 
before Frozen Mania sweeps the nation again. Will there be justice for Hans? Will those championing give Elsa a girlfriend get their wish? Will people who want to keep all the romance out get theirs? Only time will tell. In the meantime, let me know, are you a fan of Hans with fire powers? Were you a fan of Frozen in general? Why or why not? Share all your thoughts as always down below. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Turn on that bell notification to never miss a vid. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Shipper's Guide to stay up to date. And as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.